What's happening, Drizzle? I do think that there is a demand for crazy on the internet. Listen, women are getting pregnant every day in America. Build back better, blah, blah, blah. They said, you have no authority, you're not the president. The president said, I said, call him. No, screw your freedom. They're a bunch of dumb shits. No offense. Don't hate the media. They come to me. Talk about manufacturing reality. To find out more, fuck around. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back on a Friday night for your open lines. I, of course, am the drizzle here to take you to the other side of midnight this evening, uh, as is my job four nights a week. I don't I don't expect that to change anytime soon in case anyone was uh, was curious about that, Uh, or at least a better offer has not yet been presented to me. So that should continue for a while. Uh, But it is Friday. March the 5th, 2024, here in uh, the year of, what, what even year is it, uh, honestly? It, we can't even trust the calendars at this point, can we? I don't think we can, uh, at least not the ones that, that tell us what year it is. I'm, I'm hoping we can still trust the other calendars because uh, we have some wild activities scheduled for you guys next week of course there is the end of the world eclipse live stream on monday afternoon starting at 1 p.m eastern we will get together and we will rock out uh, as the world ends with uh, the great american eclipse happening and all of the blood magic sacrifice ritual type stuff that's going to be going on during that We'll, we'll just be hanging out getting high, uh, and rocking out, uh, rocking our way straight through the apocalypse. Then on Tuesday, April the 9th, Liberty Radio interview with Scott and Shelby from Unjected at 4 p.m. Eastern or somewhere thereabouts. It's going to be good to catch up with uh, Scott and find out what he has been up to. It's been, damn, it's been two years since Scott has been on Liberty Radio. That's going to be uh, a wild time, I think. And then on Saturday, April 13th, uh, me and Wheezy get together and see what we can't figure out uh, about fixing all the broken shit in COVID land. Uh, we might be able to come up with an idea or two. You never know. Uh, Again, for those who have not been paying attention, no regular Liberty Radio broadcast next week, uh, but we will be doing Get Fact Harder on Thursday night, so don't worry about that. But that's all I got for you as far as, uh, oh, and the the Wheezy interview, I don't know what time it's going to be yet. We haven't uh, discussed those particulars quite yet, but it's probably going to be in the afternoon sometime, I would imagine. So just pencil that in on your calendar. That's it. That's all the business I got. Y'all can have that. It is now time to open up the phone lines. It is your chance to be a part of Liberty Radio, ladies and gentlemen. Let us know what is on your mind tonight. You don't have to turn on your camera, but you do need to turn on your microphone. We've been over this. We can't hear you otherwise. The Zoom link is officially in the Liberty Radio Telegram channel. And uh, returning champion Rob is, uh, surprise, surprise, the first one to join us this evening. How you doing, Rob? Doing pretty good. I mean, I survived the great uh, earthquake of the East Coast this morning. I see that. 
I see that you you appear to be in one piece. Is is that an accurate representation of your being at this moment? Yeah, it was an accurate representation. I thought it was a big truck going by, except the cat was flipping out and the door was shaking. And I uh, got to my computer and I saw a bunch of people from my work chat saying, "Did you just guys? Did you guys just feel that earthquake?" <laughs> I was like, "Ah, I guess that's what it was." But and that was, was about a- what ten thirty this morning. Yeah, about that time. I'm like that. Now, did you, uh, I'm sure this is the question everybody wants to know. Did you require medical attention? Um, nah, I think I was pretty good. Just went about my day. I don't know. I, what, what do you guys think about the uh, four shocks before a uh, big one on the uh, New Memphis fault line? Has it been four already? Is there was were- a couple. There were two in New York, York, right? One in the morning and one in the evening. They were in northern New Jersey, but like right parallel oh. with New York, just west of New York. Yeah. So there's been uh, aftershocks apparently, and of course they uh, they turned it into a weather event on the Weather Channel somehow, and just anything, man, to get sensationalized about. I'm sure they're talking about every doomsday scenario they can to keep people glued to the screen. Like the snowstorm, the big snowstorm. Oh yeah. How, how was the snowstorm by the way? Did you get much snow there in Jersey? Matter of fact, no. did, the, did the earthquake uh, affect the snow? Does anybody know that? Or was, was the, the earthquake a result of the snow? Maybe all that pressure. Cause I heard it was <laughs> well, a heavy, wet snow. We didn't get any that snow. shit before. In southern New Jersey, I think that was more like East, like Massachusetts and Connecticut, New York, maybe upstate. We didn't get nothing. We just got a boatload of rain. It rained and rained and rained like monsoon, like for three days. Wow. And then Thursday, the sun came out for a minute just to insult me. And then it went back in and started raining again. So the snow and the earthquake oh, is Lord. your punishment. But not eating enough bug. <clears throat> well, I think I had it in God mode. Sorry about you that. You did have it in God mode. That's all right, though. That's fine. Sorry, right. it worked with what I said. But it's all good. It's hey, doing it on you. High as fuck, homie. Woo-hoo! <laughs> so what's on your mind tonight, Yona? Well, uh been a lot of internet outages. I've just, you know... It never ceases to amaze me but how internet and power. shitty our connectivity is in the United States. I'm often reminded um, how good it was in Ecuador and how good it was everywhere else I've ever traveled out of the United States. It was faster, cheaper internet. But uh, anyways, let's go America. Um, we're not just going to shit on the United States all night long. Just the U.S. government, which is not even a sovereign government. But that's for later. You guys ever look into those devices that the farmers were making back in the 20s that uh, were powering their houses? No, what is this? That was wow, just all kind of... You got my curiosity up. Yeah, there's a couple of things you got to go down, you know, internet rabbit holes to find, but people talking about, you know, it was it was news in the paper back then before it was all controlled about people um, developing devices to power their homes and stuff like that little self-contained energy apparatuses. I'm going to try um, the electroculture gardening this year and see if that's uh, legitimate. I got some 16-gauge copper. I'm going to twist it around wood and stick it in the ground and see what happens. I'm not familiar with that. What 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 is supposed to happen? Supposedly, you're supposed to be sucking in the... Uh, the ether energy that's around you and it's supposed to keep pests away from your garden. So you don't have to use pesticides. Supposedly you don't need to use the uh, fertilizer either because the electric stimulation makes the plants grow and it's supposed to yield like 50 to hundred percent more than normal. Oh, wow. That'll be interesting. What, what do you call it again? Electroculture. 
It's like anything else. You see people doing it on the internet. They got these videos. They have like a side by side and they tell you that this is the one they have the electroculture and this is just standard, but you don't know until you try it yourself. Yeah, that's true. Of course, you know, if you search on the internet, you're going to find the, uh, the naysayers telling you that it's a fluke. It's a, it doesn't really work. And so fuck it. It's time to break out the old chemistry set and see what happens. Yeah, go for it, man. I mean, I I started acting basically as soon as as they tried to to start doing the whole lockdown shit. I was like, okay, so this is all just illegitimate. Like, none of this actually really matters. None of this is for real. None of this is serious. This is all just everybody's play acting. That's that's the world that we live in. Everybody is play acting. Even the people who claim to be the authorities, they're play acting too. So Remember when it was just the meat processing try plants whatever, getting, man. Remember when it was just the meat processing plants getting set on fire? It seems so like five years ago. Well, now it was now like three years calling, ago. But yeah. Now we're just calling herds and murdering a million chickens just in case. Oh yeah, just in case. Better to be safe than sorry, Rob. Yeah, I guess. You know, why don't they use one of those um, useful PCR tests on these chickens and maybe save a couple hundred thousand lives? I don't know. I guess they know how worthless those PCR tests are, too. <laughs> I, at this point, I don't think they even need to use a test. They can just put it out on the news, and there's a, a portion of the population that's going to believe it not question it at all. And then there's a portion of the population that's not even going to know that it happened. Well, apparently like the PCR is like in vogue for everything. Now my uh, girlfriend's daughter had a cat and they Shh. had worms. They took it in and they took a PCR test to see what, what the cat was infected with. Like, really? <laughs> wow. Yes. Carrie Mollis is rolling over in his grave. I'm pretty sure. Oh, probably. Yeah. I uh, I gave my uh, pet rock a forty cycle threshold, uh, a forty cycle threshold PCR test, and uh, confirmed it. It was totally stoned on coronavirus. Anyway. Yeah, I was gonna say, did it have COVID? I was thinking yeah. probably yeah. HIV, maybe. Oh, and by the way, uh, I did finish a new song today. I wrote it in Braille, and it's just for the deaf. Nice. Well, that's interesting. Love to get my hands on it, so to speak. It would be like that song that Death to Tyrants sent me on Discord one day with six sheets of sheet music. And um, it had all these wild changes in time and meter and key. But when you looked at the actual staff, on the sheet music, every single note, every single measure was a rest. So it was six pages of sheet music of silence, but in different keys and time and meter. And it was written by, uh, who wrote that? Was it Billy Corgan of the Smashing Pumpkins? I don't know. It was, oh, yeah. it, it was the most obvious composition joke of all time because it was all these different wild keys and like a bunch of augmented chords the kind of shit that the pumpkins would play oh yeah but you look at the actual notes and there's just one rest for every measure every beat all rests which in you know, sheet music terminology means it's fucking silent for the entire song correct i could cover that you know, that would be ironic if I actually covered a Smashing Pumpkins song because Smashing Pumpkins didn't do cover. And I could cover that. I think it was four and a half minutes of silence. So you obviously have to announce at the end of the song. That song that you just didn't hear. Actually, that was on. Uh, I think that was on a door. I'm pretty sure that was the album it was on. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> four minutes long that you don't hear. Well, it's it's like four and a half minutes of silence. 
sounds like some kind of government service that you're getting provided emptiness. And by the way, whenever I'm in the garden state, I'm always quick to point out to every garden plant, it's ribbed for your pleasure. Get this harvest rocking, ladies. You got to come up to the garden state, Yana. You'd be surprised. And, and a note to all United States licensed drivers in the other 49 states, okay? When you get to New Jersey, and you know you're looking at your navigator, your little, it's up on the dashboard of the car over the side of the fucking steering wheel, and you're just zoned in on where do you go, and you see you're going to be turning left. Telling you right now, Yona Pro Tip, if you're needing to turn left in the state of New Jersey, get to the right lane. That's what the fucking jug handle's for. Learn this <laughs> shit before you get there. Or you're going to be driving down U.S. Route 1 for like six fucking miles. Like, how the fuck did we get through those down on the left side? Jug handle after jug handle you're passing. No, nah, they're just You're fucking welcome. here now. They're like mixing it up. You'll have those lights that have the left turn signal at the light, and then they still have the uh, old jug handles. They oh even have circles. So they're doing both yeah. now? Yeah, you guys have circles in your Jesus. states? Virginia Roundabout. does. Yeah. Roundabouts. Yeah. They started putting them in, uh, I don't know, 10, 15 years ago, something like that. Oh, they've gone nuts all around Colonial Williamsburg, fucking. Petersburg, Colonial High. I mean, it's going out the fucking Powhatan Expressway, the whole white. I mean, oh yeah. Well, all the all the areas that they're going to continue spending money in. Yeah, because they're all over fucking Loudoun County too. But the cool thing about like going to the bougie gated communities in like Richmond and Nova, Northern Virginia. Take notes if you need to. Um, we're talking about the old Dominion here. You know, for people with money, you've already got that transponder shit up on the fucking sun visor. So, you know what I'm saying? You get to take the 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 rich parkways straight to your fucking um, punch box where you can put in your little code and your little gate opens into your 15-minute um, neighborhood there. And don't piss off the homeowners association. Oh, uh, anyways. Um, nice. You're going down through like the DC I'm area. I'm going to put that on TikTok tomorrow. That was pretty sweet. <laughs> going north or south of the DC area, they have the ability to use, you know, pay extra to use the express lane. And yeah, well, then, dude, that's what they got on the fucking Dulles Tollway, all the way to Leesburg, baby. Pay that every single day. As, as uh, insulting as it is that I have to pay it rather than drive in the other lane with the people who like every time there's a turn a hill where the sun's in their eyes. They all hit their brakes at the same time. Mm -hmm. Every time I uh, am driving through that area, I plan to do it around like two in the morning, midnight-ish, so I don't have to put up with that shit. Yeah, but the, then, then you'll get caught in construction. I can well, explain to people that's who true. don't know what a jug handle is. Very, very simply, all right? Imagine you're driving down any typical interstate and you come up to a typical freeway interchange where there's on-ramps and off-ramps to access the cross street, the street that is crossing your fucking freeway. Anyways, okay, stay with me. When you're on an interstate, when you reach the actual cross street, the cross street is either going underneath the interstate and you hear a bucka bucka sound as you drive over an overpass. Or look up. There's the cross street and you're driving under the underpass. See how that works? Uh, but in New Jersey, they were like, hey, we can make all these awesome intersections up and down Route 1, just like freeway intersections, but the Garden State and we're not going to build overpasses or underpasses. We'll still have a stoplight. But if you want to make an intersection with the cross street, you have to take an off ramp just to pull up to a stoplight. Welcome to the Garden State. Anyways, back to you, Rob. When's the latest time you were in New Jersey? 
<laughs> they took most of that shit out. There's uh there is some shit that still has the jug handles, but most of it they modernized. They got rid of like the traffic circles. And then they started bringing back traffic circles after they took them all out for some dumb fucking reason. But you know why they have been trying to phase out the New Jersey jug handles, right? Because everybody who drives through New Jersey doesn't know what the fuck they're doing. Exactly! They, they try to make lefts in those intersections across two lanes of traffic and cause pileups. I, I see it all the time. <laughs> yeah. And they still do. There are still jug handles. There still are. But in most places where they've modernized the roadways, they've taken them out. That sounds intentional. It sounds like they knew people were going to do that. Now, you know, here's the thing about it. For all the money that they spend to, quote unquote, modernize a high density intersection that already has a diamond interchange built for a freeway intersection, but it is still an at grade intersection with a stoplight and to modernize it bear with me they spend more money to buy extra land at the intersection so they can expand the median from just being wide enough for a what is actually called jersey barrier a concrete barrier that you know that you see them down the middle of every interstate that's called Jersey Barrier. Jersey um, Wall. New Jersey Wall. Um, and that's not wide enough to fit turn lanes at this at great intersection. So to modernize it, they widened the road pavement by over 18 feet to accommodate left turn lanes at this intersection. And that costs more, believe it or not, than to just install an overpass or an underpass and use the fucking ramps that are already built for this interchange. And that's, I get, I'm a simple engineer, man. You've already got on ramps and off ramps to this high density intersection to modernize it. Just build the fucking bridge. You don't have to buy extra land. You won't have fucking T-bone intersection wrecks anymore from idiots from out of state that don't know what the fucking jug handle is. Because now they recognize it as an off-ramp. Do you want to access this cross street here? Then use the off-ramp, whether you're going right or, wait for it, left-hand turn. Back to you. Did, did you do a lot of driving in New Jersey, Yona? Been, been through there many times, lumping with my uncle, who was a truck driver. And for those that are uninitiated, ah, right. a lumper now it's, now it's or starting lumping to make sense. is basically the box Negro that loads and offloads shit from, you know, whether it's 48 foot or 53 foot long, the trailer, the ass end of the big semi truck. Anyway. Right. Guy who perf uh, procures the meth and the hookers at the truck stop. That yeah. too. Yeah. They're called TAs. Truck of America. You know, that's where you get the shower for Ted Buck. Wow. So, um, and Denny's is where you get the meth. They're always next to the La Quinta Inn. It's very easy to find. I think all the Denny's in my area closed down. Well, that's a shame. Not really. That's a, great, it's a damn great shame what happened to Denny's. But not as racist as Waffle House. That's why Waffle House allows smoking. Well, but if you want more than breakfast food, go to Cracker Barrel for your racist food fair. <laughs> sure. Y'all, you, you ever hear of the punk rock Denny's in Fairfax? No. Yeah, exactly. there was a they they even got a write up in uh, I want to say it was like New York Times or something. Uh, but they were they were known apparently up and down the East Coast as the punk rock Denny's because the acts that would play at the 930 club sometimes would go there after the club closed for, you know, snacks and, and whatever at the end of the night. So if you were hanging out in this particular Denny's, uh, you, you might run into famous musician at three o'clock in the morning 
Yeah, it was. It didn't happen every day, but it was possible. It could happen. But the funny thing about it was the location that was specified in the article was actually the wrong Denny's. It was the other Denny's in Fairfax that was There's the punk rock Denny's. Fairfax is a big place. Yeah. High population there. And you know, if you're going there just to dip your sausage in the leftover pancake syrup, um, and you want to look up and see Johnny Rotten, make sure you're at the right Denny's. Come on, fuck on, dude. Do your research. Yeah, it'd be a real disappointment. Getting all tuned up, dressed in your favorite furry costume, showing up, and Johnny Rod's not there. But, you know, by the way, if, if you don't want to sit down, you can still get a simulacrum of that taste of the sausage and the pancake and the syrup. Um, they're available at your McDrive through and they're called McGriddles. Anyway. Uh, I don't recommend that. You want a pro tip? Don't eat McDonald's. But if you must give your money to McDonald's and procure some of their edible food-like substances, their very foodish foodie stuff, um, my recommendation would be to buy some, put it on a, you know, a protected area. Uh, I don't know something, you know, out of the reach of um, like children and stuff, where you can put a time-lapse camera on it, and um, until you move from that location, however long you're living at that. People are moving all the time. Nobody owns anything anymore. Everybody's paying rent. And so, you know, keep that time-lapse camera on that McDonald's food and note that throughout the passage of the space-time continuum, no mold or decay occurs, and there's not a single chipmunk, squirrel, dog, anything. If anything, if a dog comes up and sniffs it, pristine would be the way to describe it. put its mouth on it, drop it to the ground, piss on it, and possibly bury it, because dogs are intelligent. Yeah. It, is, it is probably still not the case today, but when I was 16 and worked at McDonald's, the Egg McMuffins were like, I actually cooked real eggs. I had to crack the eggs and put them in a little disc and cook them off. So I, I'm pretty sure they have some other system now. They throw everything into like hot trays and like pull it out on demand, and you get, you know, That's right. cheese. Yeah. It isn't. It, no one has to crack the eggs anymore. That's what the robot anuses are for. <laughs> It just shits it right out like a unicorn making swirl ice cream. So I got a question for you. Rainbow Rob. Sherbert. Do you know or did you hear at some point today when the last uh, earthquake in that part of the country that was this magnitude was? It was 2011. It was the one that hit down near D.C. Ooh, I felt that one. That mm -hmm. was the one in um, Virginia. I think yeah. that one was like is it, like is it the same fault line that was active today? I'm not sure. Um, I remember that one. I was working in Delaware at the time, and we were sitting in a conference room, and the whole building shook, and we all looked at each other like, this shitty fucking building, we better get the fuck out of here. <laughs> in fact, the epicenter for that 2011 quake was like uh, between Richmond and Quantico up along, mm -hmm. I, I, not far from, uh, again, Colonial Williamsburg, which is um, roundabout central. If, if you're really into those circles and roundabouts, get you some at. They've even retrofitted some of the freeway interchanges with the circles, with the roundabouts. So, like now, as I was describing before, the typical diamond shaped interchange of an interstate or freeway with a cross street. Now imagine where the on-ramps and off-ramps meet the cross street that is either underpassing or overpassing the, the freeway lanes. Those intersections, instead of having stoplights, are fucking traffic circles, roundabouts. Oh, and so your ramp comes down and your ramp, your off-ramp is fed into a circle that, you know, you could just keep driving around. It's on how high you are and how much you like driving at five miles an hour, which if you're high, big overlap on that Venn diagram. <laughs> yeah, I am. Um, I'm at a roundabout. You're everywhere. The roundabouts. He starts on this roundabout, and then when the end of the song hits, we'll take whatever ramp is there. 
Damn, and they're saying we'll that quake the freeway, in... Maybe we'll go on to the freeway. Maybe we'll head out to the country. They're saying you know, that quake in, in 2011 was a 5.8. Wow. Yeah. That's pretty big. I, didn't, I don't remember it being that severe when it happened. Now, granted, when it happened, I was in uh, a moving elevator. So yeah, I, I, was... I honestly, I had no experience from that earthquake. Well, how big was the one yesterday? 4.8. Oh. That was this morning, dude. That wasn't yesterday. There was, oh, that uh, was this morning. Yeah, there was a 4.8 this morning, and then there was a 4.6 uh, like late this afternoon. Wow. Yeah. Like, I don't think it was the exact same epicenter both times, but I think it wasn't much difference. That's crazy. It it's, but I'm saying, the like, same location. there was earthquakes yesterday, and we were talking about earthquakes last night. Yeah, Hell well, because of the, the 7.5 in Taiwan. Oh, that's right, That because we had the Taiwan off yeah. last night. I forgot. Well, apparently the uh, the chip facilities didn't go offline anyway. They weren't damaged enough. I think they stopped production that day, but they went back online. I think I think I'm going to have to get uh, David Dubine on for a Liberty Radio interview because he's he's been uh, tracking things from a, a completely different perspective than a lot of other people, and I'm pretty sure I remember him saying that once we get to like March, April of 2023, because there's a, there's a planetary alignment that is happening according to uh, the, the data that, that he presents. And like he shows the, the models of the planets moving and the, the four gas giants essentially are going to form a square pattern uh, on, uh, uh, I think it's on the, like it, at one point, the Earth is in between that formation and the sun. And then uh, I think it's like in October, it's all to that and the sun and everything is all to one side. And the Earth is just like out in the open, like nothing, nothing blocking anything to come and just like smash right into us if it wanted to. Oh, boy. When you're surrounded by four gas giants in the galaxy, I believe that's called an intergalactic Dutch oven. Yeah. You better hold your nose. But and I'm pretty breath. sure I remember him saying that as this formation starts to, to happen, which would be about this time, um, and then the peak of it is in October, and then, uh, you know, there's like another six months where they start to move out of formation where it would still have, you know, some sort of gravitational effect. But I'm pretty sure I remember him saying there were going that uh, earthquake in frequency and intensity would would start to ramp up around that time and that would be one of the ways that that we would be able to measure the effect that it was having it would be weird if the wobble of the earth corrected so much that all of a sudden bobby kennedy talked normal and everyone else talked like bobby kennedy does now <laughs> kennedy 2024 coriolis effect <laughs> I don't know. I hey, if you're still right or die with Zionism and you're a liberal. Rankash is really tripping over the, the, uh, the alignment of the stars and the, the, the uh, sun's location in the sky. That, that was like the biggest internet dead end I ever found. Yeah. <laughs> I found like the video that he had had of the Inuits talking about it and like everything else was just talking shit on it. <laughs> But, you know, I think people are, like, naturally drawn to that doom porn. Like, the Earth's going to end. Everybody wants to be, like, the Mad Max out there. I think they're going to be mm. one of the survivors. But reality is, if something really bad happens, <laughs> most people aren't going to make it. No. Not at all. And it'll be, like, luck, fluke kind of shit if you do make it. It's not going to be because you were some superior uh, survivalist in most cases. Some cases, I'm sure. No one you know, uh, Rob, the uh, Inuit actually have their own fast food up there. Up in Alaska, the Yupik tribe has a Burger King, and uh, you pick the menu. Uh, whale or seal? <laughs> I hear they dig up those um, those pets. Have it your way. 
the old man beat him to the the sled dogs Have you yeah heard? that uh what's that uh dog wraith called drizzle is that the i did a rod i did a rod yeah yeah but I think they've been having trouble with the Iditarod because uh, there has been quite a bit of uh, overall thawing trend of the muskeg and the uh, tundra to where uh, I thought that you know, was all bullshit. Mushy and wet. I and, think you've been listening to the snows and stuff. Last I heard that snowpack has been increasing and increasing right. every year. Yeah. They call it the doomsday. The polar bears are going to drown and. Um, we're all going there, to There's very, uh, very serious uh, coastal erosion along the uh, northern shore of the Arctic. And, you know, regardless of uh, the on land uh, or the ground, you know, the land based snowpacks um, have seen uh, quite a bit of accretion. But unfortunately, the actual uh, ice cover at the North Pole. When graphed, because I mean, it's really easy to tell with uh, aerial uh, photogrammetry, you know, the extent of the sea ice cover as it ebbs and flows over the four seasons at the North Pole. But um, very clearly, there has been a continued uh, shrinking of the ice cover, which has allowed much more coastal erosion to take place along the uh, Arctic shore of both um, Russia, Alaska, and uh, Canada, or China, China -da or Canuckistan, or whatever the fuck that place is called. But um, there's been so much thawing around the perimeter of the northern ice cap that it's actually opened up a new maritime sea route for Russia, uh, which they have been exploiting. Um, and it allows for much shorter and cheaper, as a result, um, transits from Chinese shipping companies and others in the Pacific to sail up around Japan and Vladivostok and the Kamchatka and up between Alaska and Russia there, uh, you know, through the Bering Sea and the Bering Strait, as it were. And then turn and follow Russia's Siberian coast all the way around to Murmansk and, and then around, you know, the top of um, NATO's newest member, <laughs> Finland. God. Ukraine's going to be the newest member. That's right. And, and, which is going to be followed up by Ukraine. So that way we can have NATO literally on the border of the Russian Federation all the way down to the Black Sea. So um, can, you know, that'd be great. It'd be awesome. Two or three of the defense contractors want so much. I mean, isn't Estonia and Latvia and Lithuania, aren't they NATO members? Don't they already have NATO assets there? In, in like, uh, well, let's see, in Estonia, that would be Tallinn, which is like the most digital e fucking country there is right now. And then you got um, Riga. In Latvia, and then I want to say Vilnius in Lithuania. I mean, I think all, white those, Russia. all those countries that are part of NATO are only there because if they didn't want to be in NATO, the United States would kill them, I think is the lesson. Um, we kind of attack our own countries that are in NATO. So, Well, that was certainly the lesson for Viktor Yanukovych. And that's why we had to overthrow his punk ass, um, right, Victoria Newland, and put in uh, Petra Poroshenko with the uh, my Iron the Iron Maiden coup or my Maidan coup, twenty fourteen. Yeah, yeah, Ukraine. Yeah, yeah. Vicky yeah. Newland's thing. I mean, yeah, I mean, the project. Yachts is our guy, Drizzle. Yachts is our guy. Yeah, EU. And fuck the EU. Fuck the EU. Yeah. Yeah, I, I I can't believe that she stepped down. Who's who's going to take her evil place? Jake Sullivan? I think he's going to slide into that position. I don't think it really matters. Nah, it really doesn't. They they had to uh, they had to get rid of her, or she had to step away, or whatever. 
uh, in order for them to, to start employing a different strategy. Otherwise, it just wouldn't have looked right. Because what, what they've been doing um, is, uh, as far as uh, uh, like retaliatory attacks in Russia, has been like total terrorist bullshit. Like literally going into Russia and attacking sites in Russia with drones and, and all sorts of shit. And they have some idiots run a fucking truck into a bridge, but they uh, ran into like the first like pillar and didn't really do any damage <laughs> except kill that themselves. That sounds about right. That sounds about right. That sounds like a fail right there. I don't know. How do they get people to do this shit? Like, I, I, I guess they pay them. education, the education, building people up into the, like the, the idea that they're going to go die for some cause that they have no fucking idea. Like there's people who are like fodder. The fact that they got to drag them off to the fucking front lines um, and they've killed off the whole, you know, youth, the, the whole young generation of Ukrainian men. Yeah. I mean, kind of fucking nightmare country is that going to turn into like the women are just going to be trapped whatever they want it to that's what it's going to turn into because it's going to be the, whoever they end up shipping in there to actually well, the, be the people when the money I mean, li listen rob the choice is very yeah. simple do you want to die for mother ukraine or do you want to be like your homie sergey who's been saran wrapped to that fucking electric pole by the sidewalk for the last two weeks, shitting on himself. Think about it, buddy. At What's least he'll be able to shit in a latrine. Yeah. Come on, man. I think, think it's about cool it. that nobody else would cut him down. He must have been a real asshole. If anybody ever Bro, had, did, uh, you, 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 of course, you, you know Sergey? Seriously, your... man. I wouldn't smoke a joint with <laughs> Sergey. Fuck Sergey. He can sit out there. Hmm. <laughs> I, I'm pretty sure if you're uh, being forced to the front line with a gun, you're not really going to be a great soldier. And uh, if it's me, I'm, I'm going to take every opportunity to get that. Uh, those leaflets that the Russians are dropping and, and switch sides. Come on, Rob. Just because you're a 14 year old Ukrainian from Lviv, still wearing a uh, Bob the Builder onesie, doesn't mean that you can't be taught how to load ammunition and artillery rounds. Be practical, dude. They they sure the fuck didn't respect the trans um, women, you know, the ones that uh, put dresses and wigs on to try to cross the border, drug them right back into action. I think it's a uh, setback for trans rights, but I mean, I'm a I'm a I'm a bit on an island on my own on this one. See, Listen, and I know that Ukraine will have reached the ultimate desperation when they finally start drafting black people. Anyways, back to you, Drew. There's black people in Ukraine? Yes! I didn't know yes, that. Yes, believe it or not. Well, I mean, they flooded uh, all of Europe with migrants from Africa, so I wouldn't Even surprise. Ukraine? I thought they were I'm trying right. to do, like, the whole Especially preservation Ukraine. of the favored races thing. Bro, roll the bean footage, Bush's uh, beans dog. Man, when... <laughs> The Chris, Russian special not, not, not military not operation right began. Um, yeah, that's what they call it in Russia. The special military operation. When the Russian forces poured into the Donbass Valley, thereabouts around uh, Lugansk and Donetsk and Zaporizhzhia and Kherson and Mariupol and all that. When it all began, there was a huge exodus of Ukrainians from Kiev or whatever the fuck they call it now, um, and uh, in Lviv and other areas, fleeing into Poland and such, primarily Poland, taking trains. And there were all of these, um, we'll just call them the help. Um, hotel workers, sanitation mm -hmm. workers, um, black people. Anyways, and they're like, hey, we want to get the fuck out of here, too. And they're like, Blackie's got to take the bus. Trains for the white skis. You know, now that you're saying it, I think I do remember hearing something like that. Yeah. It was, it was pretty in your face. 
pretty in your face because it was happening all over the well, country. Well, because it was it was a very like fascist type of move. It was like, oh, okay. Well, now people will obviously see what. No, mm -mm, nope. I'm telling. I've got a challenge right now. The Yona will pay you a hundred dollars to anyone that could go on Google Earth or any mapping software, and give me the coordinates for a Martin Luther King Memorial Road Drive street for any type King of shit. road surface within the nation state of the Ukraine that has been named in honor of Martin Luther King Jr. I have a dream. And that was never in that dream. Did you say in never. Ukraine? And again, I said Martin Luther King Jr., not Stepan Bandera. You'll <laughs> find plenty of those streets. Who who is Stepan Bandera, Yona? Um, Stepan Bandera was the founder of the Ukrainian Nationalist Party. Um, let's see. He was a close, uh, intricate cog of the... Um, well, I guess it's called Operation Gladio. Oh, yeah? Um, you know, it's kind of a bridge between WAP and SS troops in the Ukraine in 1945 and the WAP and SS troops that are in Ukraine in 2025. Dude, check this out. Oh, I got ahead of myself. It's yeah. still 2024. <laughs> I just got out of the time machine. Yeah, yeah. Shout out to uh, Lone Star Viz for dropping the link in the live stream chat. Afro-Ukrainians or black Ukrainians are Ukrainians of sub-Saharan sub African descent, including black people who have settled in Ukraine. Uh, they are multilingual, knowing both Russian and Ukrainian, in addition to their native languages, and are aware of the cultural conflict in Ukraine between the Ukrainian and Russian languages. So they are very sophisticated people. Mm -hmm. uh, the um, Cyrillic script that is shown there yeah. would not be pronounced N-E-H-R, Nair, like um, a hair removal product. The four Cyrillic uh, symbols shown there would be pronounced... Um, Negger, like Niagara Falls. Anyway. But totally not offensive. Right? <laughs> uh, cue the minstrel music yeah, and the black It's actually paint. saying it comes from the French Negre. Uh, and also, yeah. I mean, it didn't sound like a hard R from where I'm sitting. Yeah, in Spanish. And N -E -G -R -E in Spanish. In French. In is Spanish. Negro. Is negro. And in Portuguese, it is also negro. Or as they say, N-E-G-G-R, negro, which is yeah. um, totally not offensive. Yeah, and it's, it's the native Slavic word for things that are naturally black, uh, like a car with a black paint job. Right. Yeah. Which is a Chomsky negro. There you go. And now you know what Noam Chomsky's main name means. Well, we kind of always knew that about Noam, didn't we? And, you know, pretty soon uh, Chomsky will be in a black car. It's called a hearse. Anyway. <clears throat> he, um, Spoiler alert. <laughs> we all he, die in the end. He reminded me of the uh, Simpsons episode where Mr. Burns was, uh, they were uh, parodying Howard Hughes and... Uh, that's that's what Noam Chomsky during the pandemic when he came out and his hair was all wild. I imagine his nails were long and he was stir storing his urine and stool samples when he came out to tell everybody that we should starve to death if we didn't, you know, go along with the poison. The the guy who wrote manufacturing consent <laughs> was trying to manufacture. Uh, Rob, to be consent. fair to Noam Chomsky, he does not have to store his own urine and stool samples. No, he That's does it because Chinese he wants to. Order you know. for. <laughs> exactly. He does exactly. it because he wants to. Ming, Ming Hung Lo um, stores the samples for him, and uh, it's the best thing he ever wrote off for. Wait, does he, have a, does he have a mail order wife? Yeah, just like George Galloway. Just like, yeah, that's what I was going to say, just yeah. like Galloway. Wow. Yeah. 
Is there anyone who gets into pop culture uh, fame who isn't CIA sponsored or um, co-opted at some point? <laughs> Rob, I'm telling you, you should really give it a thought. Wouldn't you love to eat stir fry every day? Just saying. <laughs> Learn how to eat with chopsticks and you're going to have a loving, enduring relationship. And and learn to love soy sauce. We really need to work on our Mandarin. I mean, Cantonese wouldn't be bad for a side gig, but... Yona pro tip. Make some, mix in some wasabi with that soy sauce, and it's a really spicy lubricant. And it's edible. Mm. Sounds spicy. Mm. That's interesting. I mean, I don't want to tell you how to live, man. You seem to be uh, working it pretty good with all those kids of yours. So. That's right. Just yeah. remember, folks, wasabi mixed with soy sauce. It makes like, um, well, remember what black and green make. I mean, if you're going to take and advice green together, from anybody, and it makes the color pleasure. You, know, you want to you wanna take it from somebody who, who, by all appearances, knows what they're doing. I mean, I'm taking it from some, yeah. some childless barren right. person. Yeah, you know, <laughs> when it comes to that, that's right. It ensures the survival of the human species because, believe it or not, there are things that are impacting the survival of the human species, and it's made with bioengineered ingredients. Who has that more kids know. right now, Yona? You or Elon Musk? I got eight. How many does he have? Let's find out. Let's um, let's ask the internet how many kids Elon to, Musk has. I mean, you but can't, they have to be fathered by him. We're, we're not counting adopted. I'm not counting clones either. Just the real ones. When it comes to kids, Shh, I've, Rob, I've helped to raise. They're not supposed be, to know about that yet. That would put me up to nine. That's next year. Eleven known children. Well, again, all right. This is according to the brave uh, AI search it up uh, thingy. 11 known children with three different mothers. That's impressive. Mm. Last one was a peach. I mean, mm. well, there was, all right. So there was Grimes. Uh, Grimes there was the, the chick at uh, Tesla that he banned. Amber Heard. Um, no, oh, he doesn't have a girlfriend. kid with, no, I'm trying to figure out who the, who the women. Oh, are. you're going through the baby mama list. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Because 11 children from three women, like I know one of those women, it was only one child. And I thought with Grimes, it was only one child. So the real question is how many kids? So then that means the other one has been like an octo mom, pretty much the way my math does, but I'm not a math person. Oh, no, I'm sorry. She didn't work for Tesla. She worked for Neuralink. How many kids before the hair plugs? How many kids after the hair plugs? I don't know. I'd have to do a timeline examination to, to give mm -hmm. you a, uh, an You know that rug on top, on that, that's rug. actually a patented and trademarked E lawn. E lawn. You know, he it, says it, it, it's AstroTurf for your scalp. Yeah, but he and says he's just, plugged in. he's just trying to help the underpopulation crisis. He's trying to be a humanitarian. What do you guys think about that coming out? Um, I heard that a while back, but apparently it's um, in the news now about the uh, world population dropping for the first time since the bubonic plague. Mm -hmm. um, Do not tell Paul wants to, early uh, to point that. To the it, he'll be rolling in his grave. No, no, he's still nobody alive. Wants, nobody wants oh, to he's still there. The <laughs> oh, well, then, then by all means, let Paul Ehrlich know his population time bomb. Total bullshit. Then. Oh yeah, it was. It just fizzled out. Is what happened. Uh, but he's still doing a victory lap. Don't worry about it. Uh, he's he's there at Stanford doing his thing. Uh, it'd be a damn shame if uh, you know we were to have another Unabomber or something that just targeted like population people. Um, this of course is the perfect time to remind everyone that Liberty Radio is for entertainment purposes only. Uh, and and we still have almost an hour of open lines left uh, for anyone else who wants to jump in on this conversation. The link is in the Liberty Radio Telegram channel, uh, as well as a few other uh, carefully chosen locations, one of them being the uh, Grand Theft World Forum on the show announcement for this evening. You know, 
what do you guys think about the power principle as uh, espoused by Theodore Kaczynski? You remember that uh, part of his writings? Refresh my memory. The power principle was essentially that all humans are um, have an innate uh, need to provide, you know, the basic necessities for themselves. And through like, you know, hunting for your food, foraging, whatever, all that type of stuff. And with the um, onset of technology, people no longer have to concern themselves with those basic, uh, I guess, evolutionary needs mm -hmm. or whatever you call it. So now that they need proxy activities. So when you're making money, um, doing something else like being a lawyer, doctor or whatever, you're not, you know, being true to your nature essentially. And you have to take up proxy activities to um, fulfill that part of your self and it leaves you hollow, I guess was his point. I sound think, like when you need yeah. to find hobbies for your pets that can't feed or take care of themselves. Right. He, he called it the power principle. I may not be getting that exactly right. It's been a long time since I uh, browsed through. Well, you know, there, there might be something to it because oh, I definitely see something to it. I mean, without my... technology, like we would still be living uh, most likely in harmony with nature. Right. As opposed to, to what we're doing right now, uh, which it occurs to me if that was the case, then how would that essentially be any different from the story that we're told about the Garden of Eden? Like well, if, here's the if thing about it. If you're actually living in the... harmony with nature, you're in disharmony with technology. If you're living in harmony with the technology, you're going to be disharmonious to nature anyway. Well, right. You know, when I was growing up, I thought technology was going to set humanity free and everybody was going to be able to pursue whatever, you know, basically floated their boat and uh, technology was going to support the food supply and all that stuff. I, you know, I saw Star Trek and I was like, you know, those space liberals really got it going on. And uh, unfortunately. <laughs> and now we realize, <laughs> Rob, that. a um, totally different fucking purpose. <laughs> I was going to say, we, we realize <laughs> now hope. that technology is the complete opposite. Smart cities dumb you down. Smartphones dumb you down. Um, Bioengineered food actually leads to poisoning and starvation. Um, and technology does not free you. Technology is the digital panopticon that enslaves you forever. The end. Anyway. Yeah, we're so almost you're, there. So if you're so if you're already living in a digital simulation and you spend all your time on another digital simulation, what is is there some kind of paradox there? <laughs> uh, if you don't like it, press Control Alt Delete and check your reboot options. You don't approach it. I mean, I, 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 I was half amazed and uh, kind of saw it coming when people were walking around with those Apple visors when they first came out. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's just like, wow, the, the natural world is like so beautiful. If you're not, I mean, if you're in the city, it's shitty. I could imagine strapping on something to try to make that miserable existence any better. But if you're in like the real, you know, outside the cities where nature's around you, trees, animals... It's like, why would you want to be strapped into something and obscure that view? Listen, Rob, don't knock it. If, if There are situations where those goggles come in handy. If you're leaving the bar and you hear the bartender screaming, last call for alcohol, and now you're scanning the bar and you just got to take whatever, and so you just grab the nearest butterface and head for the closest La Quinta Inn because there's a Denny's right next door. And you know the beer goggles are going to wear off and the paper bag might fall off my head or the one might fall off her head as well. So I'm going to wear these goggles underneath the paper bag. And I'll have a pair for her too cuz class. They already ruined the Japanese. They were fucking they were they went from buying uh female panty, used panties in a fucking uh vending machine to marrying pillows 
to now they're marrying oh, like right. di like anime digital versions of a female like yeah <laughs> Yeah. So how much, how much longer is it going to be before? Well, I mean, we already had people marrying sex dolls, right? They're, they're going to make sex robots. You know, that's going to be a thing. It's going to happen. So how long is it going to be before somebody marries their sex robot and then divorces it? Oh, it's, it's even worse. And then the robots, gonna the sex take, bot like, half divorces the human, not vice versa. It's but, the, you, when, when you get served with papers from the sex bot, it's like, bro, you couldn't have told me? You had to send a, a process server to knock on the fucking front door? But is this going to set on, some, sex bot. some kind of divorce precedent where you get pussy payments as part of the alimony? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. But it, it might just be the thing that uh, establishes robots as, like, equal to humans and, like, gives them citizen status and allows the government to tax them and you know all of that good shit i don't know i'm just hoping that there's uh still work in like 10 years because uh it seems like they want to automate us all out of the workforce there's they're stupid artificial intelligence well, it's, it's, we're not going to be fully automated out of the workforce it's just that for the master class to communicate to the automated workforce um Se debe hablar solamente en castellano. Anyway. Hmm. Well, and they're going to need people to fix the robots, too. That's right. And that's where manual and labor fix comes in. the robots in. that fix the robots. And, and you know, when it comes to manual labor, Manuel has friends like Valentino and Sanchez to help repair the robots. Yeah. Didn't, at the didn't Home Depot he, parking he, lot right now. Elon Musk's robot can hold an egg, man. You guys are freaking off base. <laughs> Uh, if, if you've ever seen those Boston Dynamics freaking robots, man, that's the scariest shit I've ever seen. Yeah. The things doing fucking backflips and doing like dance routines. And that's like the full size robots. And the you know, we've had two Boston they, Terriers as They've dead. already figured out how to equip those things with fucking guns. So now, yeah. I keep and telling then, my wife, if they we wanna... ever get another Boston Terrier, I'm going to, I'm going to name our next Boston Terrier um, dynamic. I'm yeah. sorry. Well, no, now they want to put AI inside of those robots so that they are fully autonomous. Yeah. Like, what could possibly oh go right? You know? I'm going to give you a warning right now to all the male humans on Earth. If you see a lavender colored robot, you're a target. Back to you, other two males on the panel. Okay. No, how, how absolutely stupid is that? To create something that powerful and then be like, well, let's see what happens when, when we put a, a program we can't control in charge of this thing that can kill us. Like, did What could go wrong? I mean, Boeing tried it on their 737 MAX airplanes with the um, maneuvering uh, characteristics augmentation system, and it, it's not like it killed a whole bunch of people. I I thought that the Reaper drones were semi autonomous, like they were given like a target and sent out to, uh, you know, acquire the target. Basically, I know there's some that they guide from, you know, some Call of Duty like console mm -hmm. and a, uh, in a trailer out in Nevada. <laughs> no, but, there's they have fully autonomous drones now, where they they literally just like give the drone a target. And in order, and that's it. It goes and does its thing. It finds the target and it eliminates the target. That's its job. That's what it was built to do. We have those now. Yeah, um, how I'm about pretty sure we've covered it here on Liberty Radio. I, I forget which um, movie it was with Gerard Gerard Butler, where it was one of those White House Down or one of those dumb fucking movies. Well, they, they like attacked the president while he was at his like vacation retreat with like a swarm of like a hundred fucking drones, little drones with bombs attached to them. And it was like, wow, <laughs> if that's like a real thing, you could really fuck somebody up with that. Well, have you seen the light displays in Japan from the drones? Yeah. 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 Why, why couldn't, why couldn't you use those for, for that same purpose? 
Well, I'm sure that the military is way ahead of us on that. I, mean, I don't think they need our advice. <laughs> Hopefully there's not a swarm of drones waiting for me outside later. Well, trust me, DARPA is not beating down my door and throwing money at me for my ideas. I wish they were, <laughs> but it's not happening. I would... Uh... actually be an interesting job to have if your uh, conscience could take the evil that you were uh, bringing onto the world <laughs> doing that kind of research well you just have to be a psychopath that's all yeah no but, more. but what if the pay is really good yeah mm. think about it nah it's probably the director that that makes the good money and that everybody everybody else that's working there yeah they're probably making like six figures but it's probably like you know, 150, 200 K a year. It's probably not that much. And probably shitty healthcare and retirement. I no, mean, it's, it's federal benefits. Oh, you get rid of a body, you know, wife gets out of line or something. Husband gets out of line. They'll take care of it for you. I'm sure at least once. Yeah. It's good. To, it's good to have uh favors into people, you know? Yeah. What's in your wallet? Samuel Jackson. Speaking of smart technology, uh, did you guys see that the uh, the Amazon? What was it? What did they call it? In the Whole Foods, the Just Walk uh, Out oh, technology, yeah, where yeah, you'd be able to go in. Part. Yeah, you'd be able to go in and just put stuff in your shopping cart, and like the store just knows what you're buying, and you'll just be able to walk right out the door with it. Well, it turns out it came out this week that that was actually about a thousand people in New Delhi trying to like watch everybody in the store and, and pick up all the shit that they were putting in their cart. So it was an RFI day because that's what it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be like a scanner picks up these items that you're in possession of and you know, links to your account. Yeah, I'm just uh, I'm just relaying the information that other alleged journalists have uh, have already put out into uh, the ecosystem. Yeah, apparently it was it was just a bunch of hired humans. That is like clownish. Wow. Yeah. Really? That, that that was your strategy. I wonder how much money you lost on that in, endeavor. <laughs> Uh, I, I'm fucking Walmart just came out. I'm I'm sure you guys already talked about this, but they're stupid. Uh, you can't use their self checkout now unless you sign up for a Walmart Plus membership for ninety eight dollars a year. What? Yeah, that's something that's going into effect. I don't know when it's going into effect, but oh, that's I'll interesting. Never, never go to Walmart again hmm. and uh, stand in line with the uh, the laziest cashier that they can put in line. The, the one around May, they have the, the self-checkouts and they encourage you to use them because they only have two lanes open with um, people that are uh, less than speedy. So, Well, I thought that but, was the entire Walmart staff. Well, Just find the biggest, slowest people that we can and employ all of them. I don't want to make generalizations, but their fucking greeter staff really sucks. I, I can't remember the last time I had... Well, I, just recently... The first time in like 10 years, I got a good greeting, but it was a young person. So, oh, well, yeah, they hadn't had the life squashed out of them yet. Yeah. Still had that look of hope in their eyes. Oh, my. So, <laughs> it, you know, it does make me wonder, like, how much of the rest of Amazon that we've been promised is like state of the art is actually just like fucking safety pins and, and you know, rubber bands. Amazon, they're like running a modern day slave market, paying people as little as they can, like busting their balls about bathroom breaks. And I don't know. Seems like that's the way that they want things to be. Because weren't they also using robots in their warehouses? Yeah, they're getting into that now. A lot of it. I'm sure they're going to be the first automated warehouses and they'll have like the human caretakers just to pretend like we're still employing people. But Jeff Bezos' grandfather was, you know, Mr. DARPA. So I don't know 
I'm pretty sure that has a little bit of an influence on <laughs> where the business is going. <laughs> Well, uh, and probably a little bit on, uh, you know, how how he was able to do exactly what he did. Because there's, there's no way that anybody who was not connected in some way, shape, or form would have been allowed to get away with that. He basically cornered the market on publishing, which has always been... Uh, a big parasite class industry. And they strong armed them. They were like, this is the price we're going to pay. And otherwise your book isn't going to get sold. So yeah. Yeah. And uh, the fact that there isn't even a, there isn't a uh, Pepsi to the Coke is uh, very interesting. I, I think before uh, Elon had his idea for his one app to roll them all, that was kind of the way Bezos was going to go. I'm sure there'll be some synergy um, amongst them, oligarchs. Mm -hmm. And they're going to give us that app that's going to be the one thing that's going to save us all. You know, the ironic thing is um, for invalids and those that are shut in at home, you know, regardless of age or injury, um, you can actually go online to uh, Amazon.com and order a piss jug. And there's a good chance that while your Amazon online order for a piss jug is being fulfilled, one of the Amazon workers may actually be pissing in a jug while sorting through your box that's containing a piss jug true story Don't be amazon a, yeah. online Don't be a jerk. <laughs> that's right that's what you call synchronicity well yeah. I mean, we're weaving a nice little tapestry there with darpa and robots and and now we have piss jugs as part of the uh equation we'll have to balance welcome to the future time now. folks yeah. having fun yet Brings me back to some videos from the pandemic when people were spraying their coffee cups at, you know, Starbucks or Dunkin' Donuts with sanitizer and then wiping it off and drinking it. Yeah. My favorite is who was, I think it was actually Tom Green who told the story of he would have the groceries brought in to the house and then they would have to sit in a room by themselves for 72 hours before... Like he could touch them and do anything with them. And I, you know, now that I'm, I'm retelling that story, I'm thinking to myself, that has to be bullshit because there's no way that like your milk and all of that is going to survive just out room temperature for 72 hours. Well, no, that's why you have a quarantine, um, little mini fridge. Oh, so um, you have a quarantine. You have to be rich enough to have a quarantine kitchen to keep the food in, you know, while it's being deloused. Uh, of, no problem. You can keep it in the kitchen that's at the bar down by the pool and the grotto outside on the gotcha. backyard. Gotcha. No problem. Damn. Is Tom, that is that what being married to Drew Barrymore gets you? Ah, uh, it is that Tom Green. The guy who fucked the moose for attention. Yeah. 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 I, I, I wouldn't believe anything he said. Yeah, we, we know who wears the strap on in that relationship. They're I, not still I, married, honestly, I think Drew's just happy to be here most days. I do. Yeah. Yeah. They got She's to her cool. young. She man. does a lot of drugs. Yeah. yeah she, every day. Good for her. It really uh, fucked with her as a young kid. No doubt. And I'm not judging her. And I'm yeah. not telling people what to do. Hey, if you're like, Yana's always talking about weeds and drugs, and that's not really my thing. Hey, still love you. That's cool. Yona do Yona. You do you. That's how it works around here. Fuck it, we ball. That's our motto. That's right. Hopefully nobody was giving Yona cocaine when he was 11. <laughs> I don't think Yona needed cocaine when he was 11. <laughs> I mean, it would have worked like the ADHD medicine. It would have, like, maybe. You know, down and, oh, and by the way, for those keeping track and along uh, to the show in Latin, we do rebroadcast in the Roman Empire. Um, fuck it, we ball, I believe, is uh, Irumabo nos partium. Um, 
fuck it, we've all. Or um, uh, I'll figure it out. And then the Grand Theft World uh, motto is um, "In Omnia Paratus," ready for anything. And yep. of course, then you got my uh, Latin motto, which is um, "Et plus cannabis fumigam." Uh, I'm sorry, "Et plus cannabis fumigant." Smoke more of the weed. Oops. Yeah, there it is, right there. In Omnia Paratus, ready for anything. Bring it, motherfuckers. Yeah. Irumabo nos pila. Uh, well, now, pila means ball, like a bouncing ball. Ah. But when you're talking about we ball, you mean we ball like we ball out, like we're partying, like we're throwing a ball or a party, not throwing a beating right, ball so see. down. Let's see if I change the context. What happens? Yeah, nos partiam. Nos partiam. Yeah. Yeah, or you could put it in the other way. Put in the Latin and then see what the English comes out. But it should be uh, irumabo nos partium. Yeah, irumabo nos partium. That's what they said, and that that what? sounds right from my <laughs> memory of con conjugation. Yep. Right. Yep. Hey, if, you, if, you, if you're going to be vulgar. Use the Vulgate. That's the Yona Pro tip. So you guys going to make it out to the Third Eye Carnival in July? I think so. I don't know. I'm going to start looking into preparations after the eclipse. Once I know that, that things haven't completely fallen apart, right, and the government hasn't declared martial law, and we're still going to be allowed to move freely about the country, um, yeah, I'll start putting some plans together to go out there because it'll be my I mean, birthday. I can't that say weekend, it's impossible. So. I can't say that it's impossible that the Yona would make it out to Colorado because I've been to Colorado before. Um, that's why I know I'll never drive across Kansas again. <laughs> and I'm also not driving across Arkansas. Oh, God. So no. Don't ever that do that. Kind of limits my options. I gotta that go. Through. I either have to cross through Louisiana or Missouri. Mm. So what's wrong with Kansas? That's like and uh, so the the really probably the preferred route would be cutting through Joplin. That way I can take the forty four, and it just cuts right into Oklahoma there, uh, and then take Oklahoma all the way across to Colorado. But nevertheless, um, it's actually longer drive for the Yona to drive from West Virginia to Colorado than from West Virginia up to um, uh, New Hampshire for the uh, Porcupine Freedom Festival. And I don't know if I could pull off both in one year um, unless it just starts raining fucking cash in my life right now because I'm just trying I to imagine that. With gas at four dollars a gallon, how many gallons of gas it is would it take up to four dollars a gallon five. now? It's like three fifteen around May, I think. Yeah, it's still three ninety five here. I guess they're just gouging because of all the tornado damage. Probably, Thanks. yeah. Neither Good work, guys. Around May, so didn't they do the same thing in New Jersey after Superstorm Sandy hit? And they jacked all the fucking gas prices up. No, the thing was, there was uh, not many gas stations that were even open because power got knocked out all across the southern part of the state. And the yeah, part of the I knocked down a whole lot of pine trees down there too. I don't know if you ever been to southern New Jersey, but I hope you like pine trees. Yeah, I'm in What's the pine, wrong with land, pine so. trees. It's a million acres in New Jersey of pine lands. Yeah, that's a total pine in the ass. I live right on the edge of it, so. It's nice and uh, isolated away from everything. They have like certain building restrictions where you can't put up houses um, in like a development area. You got to own 10 acres, at least in my part. I'm sure that, like different areas have different uh, zoning. Uh, regulations. That sounds pretty communist to me. I always like the pine trees when they get the big, big waxy bubbles on the bark, you know, that big thick white blobs of um pine nut or whatever i don't know pine splooge pine tar i guess There's wild blueberries everywhere 
sticky and everything. It's got to be hundreds of uh, wild blueberries in my backyard. I have like 2.3 acres and the backyard is probably like one, one and a half acres is still wooded. And Oh, all I love my, me some wild berries. all You know, through that, the. that's the original stomping ground of the Delawares, the Lanai Lenape tribe. Well, I, I don't think a lot of people are aware of the fact that Delaware is named after the Lanai Lenape tribe because they were also called the Delaware Indians. Um, Yeah, there's a high school near me that has that name, the Lenape name. They call it Lenape. They call it Lenape here, but I'm sure you got the right pronunciation. Well, well, um, Lenape is how it's pronounced in English, and then Lenape is the pronunciation in the language itself. Just like, you know, we would say Chalagi or Chalagi, um, Chalagi or Chalagi, and then in English you would say Cherokee. There you go. But Lenape, I mean, most people would call it, you know, New Jersey used to be Lenape land or Lenape, whatever. Same thing. Potato, potato, tater. So the Dutch came here and fucked it all up for everybody. <laughs> well, it was the Dutch that named it New Amsterdam, and they're the ones that named the West yep. River, the North River, the East River, and the South River. And yeah, they very still original call the East with River their naming the East convention. River. The North River is still called the North River right down along Manhattan, but for the rest of it, it's called the Hudson River. I mean, all of the original 13 colonies was just like a redo of England. Like Pretty much. there's N New York um, is York, New yeah. Jersey, Jersey, <laughs> like so many different names in Virginia. Virginia, the, the land we're about to rape. Yep. That's right. Virginia named after Queen Elizabeth, the Virgin Queen. <laughs> right. 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 And, of course, Kentucky was named after Kentucky Hampton Shearton, uh, which is in Wales, I think. No, no, it's the Cherokee. <laughs> I was going to say, I didn't, I didn't, th I didn't think Tucky is, is a part of anything British I've ever heard before. No, that's actually from a kind of doggy. Canal, canal doggy. Gotcha. Means where the turkeys roost, the turkey roost. You want turkeys? Go get your turkey in Kentucky and have a Thanksgiving dinner. So, um, what do you guys know about the Jesuits? Uh, Society are, of Jesus. Are Jesuits the ones that make the uh, the funny taste in chocolate milkshakes, the the Maltese shakes? No, the, they they're the ones who types have of Malta milkshakes. The the Black Pope. I mean, right. they did, oh, gotcha. It did it did shit all over Malta. Supposedly, it's revenge. From being banished from there or political subversion. I don't know. I, I saw uh, a document on it. I've heard people talk about the Jesuits in various um, forms. Um, people were saying Fauci was a Jesuit. Mm -hmm. Then there's the, uh, the whole tie in the Satan because the, uh, the Catholic Church is uh, pretty much, they say, kind of church now, the Vatican. Well, I mean, here's the thing about it. The Catholic Church Church is not a monolithic dogma or doxology, and that's why you have these different um, cults. Oh, did I say cults? I meant yes, sex. You did. I they meant the, sex. They, I mean, they were originally. So, you know, you have your like your Franciscans. You have your um, Cistercians. You have your Jesuits. Um, you have your Augustinians. You have mm. your Trappists. I mean, there's all these different um, cults. Oh, I did it again. Sex. I mean, um, and, you know, they might sponsor convents for women where they can become nuns or they might sponsor monasteries where men can become monks. I'm not sure how that applies to the new gender categories um, that I guess have always existed. So... If you're in one of those, um, I guess we'll say refurbished gender categories. Um, I'm not sure That's how refurbishment is accommodated by different sex um, 
regarding oh. cults or cults yeah. regarding the sex. I mean, the sex with the anyways, the cults, um, anyway, everything what? but sex. Um, now say it sounds like I'm talking about butt sex. I'm all confused. <laughs> Well, That's why you can't have male nuts. Because again, butt sex. Butt sex, yeah. yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Uh, apparently they were founded in like the 1540 by St. Ignatius of Loyola. Sounds That's right. right. That's right. That's right. They were the uh, military arm of the uh, Vatican, basically, of the Catholic Church. Mm -hmm. And fell out of favor in uh, pretty much every country because the monarchies didn't like them. They didn't like the power that they had. And uh, then they got expelled from many countries. And the rest is kind of um, speculative. And who really knows? They're tied into the Illuminati and the Masons. And they well, the thing about it is, if you're if you subscribe to the Jesuit theology, then you're basically ride or die like Saint Ignatius, because you know he was from Loyola too, and they also sponsor Loyola University, which is mm -hmm. up in um, uh, good old Chi Town, Chirac, Cook County, Illinois, Chicago. Oh, double the of... Bears. Yeah, and also uh, uh, Jesuits. Just across the town is uh, Columbia University. Yep. Interesting. And then you can go up to the Quonset and Skokie, get some of the best pie pizza. Yeah. And you also have yeah, the alma mater of uh, Barry Satoro, University of Eat Chicago. That pizza with a pork there. Those guys there. That's right. <laughs> I don't so know, Rob. Um, how, do you, how do you find the list of the current Jesuits? I mean, the, it, you can do a search and come up with the um, supposed Black Pope. They don't call him that. I think he's like the Society General of the, or the, the General of the Society of Jesus or something like that. Hmm. But if you do a search, it will do tell you that a, he... Do they have a website? Uh, I didn't find one. I wasn't looking for one, though. I was just... I was using the uh, Microsoft. Jesuits.org. Jesuits.org. Yeah. Oh, there you go. The artificial. Swipe left or swipe right. Hey, I, I don't know. Just don't yeah. forget Hallelujah. to Hallelujah. Christ is risen, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, according to Jesuits.org. This is definitely going in the replay notes. <laughs> so how, how do you write? Christ is risen with emojis. Is that like the crucifix emoji and then the eggplant? <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. Crucifix eggplant. Work. Christ is risen. Hallelujah. Yes, I'm happy to save you. Unless someone comes up with a new emoji. I'm going to have to go with that one. Are you happy to save me, Jesus, or wow. what? I'm seeing eggplants. <laughs> yeah, their website design is totally modern. They've uh, whoever it is that's that's putting this together for them. They know what they're doing. How many Jesuit universities are kicking out, you know, influential people? I guess would be the the real question. Yeah. And well, and, you know, service yeah. and justice are key priorities of Jesuit education. Rob, where are they in the hierarchy? As far as uh, these different councils and. People who are directing things. And hey, here's a Yona pro tip. When you're reading that tramp stamp and you're about to get it on, why don't you ask your sexual partner first about their apostolic preferences? Jesuit sex is like tantric sex. Ask Sting. Anyway. <laughs> I think they're Renfields. I think they, they are literally a group of minions who are... Uh, program to to carry out the the acts necessary to you know bring about the great work. Yeah, I think that's what they're 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 literal foot soldiers. There, there's um, questions whether it's actually uh, a authentic document, but it was entered into the, like I think the 66th Congress, the uh, <laughs> the vows to be a Jesuit, and it was pretty subversive shit. Hmm. About basically um, 
not trusting anybody, blending in with whatever group you are, uh, and never revealing that you're a Jesuit. <laughs> and um, just kind of lying in wait for your orders. Yeah, uh, just like a snake in the grass. Yeah, I, I never really, uh, I, I'd heard the Jesuits referred to here and there. And um, I know in Whitney Webb's book, she references the Jesuits. But I didn't really, um, if it was in there, I missed it, where it was kind of projected to be in the hierarchy of the different, you know, roundtable groups. And, and for reference, for those that are trying to keep up, um, I can compare this to um, Teenage Mutant into Turtles. Calabunga. Um, the Jesuits are like the Foot Clan that all serve Master Shredder. Back to you, Rob. There you go. Yeah, that, that's a good way to look at it. Essentially, I mean, if you if you listen to the uh, unfounded uh, Calabunga books that people have written about it, they you know claim that Napoleon was under their guidance and he you know acted on their accord. So I don't know. Well, apparently they're really big into justice and ecology. So much yeah. so that they have uh, an office of justice and ecology uh, conveniently located in the District of Criminals uh, where they are working to increase awareness and engagement with legislators, public officials, corporations, and the Jesuit network on issues including immigration and economic, criminal, juvenile, and environmental justice. Wow. Yeah. And so just they, remember, folks, I just like really uh, Johnny Cochran said in LA District Court, if the Jesuit don't fit, you must acquit. Ah, and apparently uh, internationally, they are best known, uh, their best known social justice outreach. Uh, is the Jesuit Refugee Service, which I'm sure is totally not a front not for human, human trafficking. trafficking. Not at all. <laughs> not at all. Why would no you way. think that, Rob? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I'm jaded by uh, <laughs> reality. <laughs> wow. Somebody's trafficking all those people. <laughs> I tell you, people that left after the first hour are going to be disappointed. <laughs> well, I mean, Drizzle, how do you think you know they find centerfold models for the Jesuit uh, monthly publication, Altar Boy? Yeah. Well, something that uh, is confirmed in historical fact that I read was that um, Thomas Jefferson and John Adams had correspondence. I don't know if it, the correspondence was 1816. No, the correspondence was in 1816, but I'm not sure if the Jesuits had been reinstated in 1816 by the Vatican. It was at that point, according to lore, that the uh, the Jesuits, you know, they put they put the Pope in place themselves at this point. And then they got all these different countries to um, reinstate them and allow them to be in the country. Because I think like France, Portugal, Spain, they all threw them out because they were subversive. And uh, Thomas Jefferson and John Adams wrote letters back and forth with their concern about the Jesuits. So that's that's definitely factual. You know, the rest of it was there was what I watched, but there was a lot of speculation you know, it was like watching it, one of those silly um, UFO documentaries where they're like, well, we know this is true, so we can assume that this is true also. Right. It's some crazy, nonsensical bullshit. <laughs> That's how most of the documentary I watched went. But, you know, there was some fact rooted in there that you could actually look up. And I did confirm. Yeah, well, <laughs> I mean, they're they're not like you can't exactly call them a secret society, right? Because their yeah. their existence is well known, um, and they they present themselves as a humanitarian organization, a philanthropic humanitarian organization uh, that works directly with the Catholic Church. Um, that's probably the, the problem. When right you hear there. that term, yeah, whenever you hear that word, you've got to clue into it. Philanthropic. 
eggplant dropping well, right in your face. It's right in your face. Can't you see it? Well, yeah, it's all part of the inversion, right? Like they they say philanthropic, but what they actually mean is misanthropic. That's right. <laughs> it's not benevolence. It's actually malevolence. malevolence. Right there. You go. Well, they're kind of like the Fabian Society, where I mean, at least what I read was their their um, motto was "Come in like a sheep" and you know, "Come out like a wolf" or whatever. <laughs> is it the actual yeah. symbol for the Fabians? A wolf wearing sheep's clothing. Yes. It is. It's yeah. On, on yeah. stained glass in the building they all met in. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, Which again, you know, it's literally in your fucking face, folks. Right. We have confirmed. But it makes me wonder, like, how much cross pollination there may have been between these groups. You know, is it is it similar to what we see today with all these uh, interlocking uh, board? Uh, of corporations, you know, where people are sitting on like five and six different uh, corporate boards of, of various industries. And that is essentially what is allowing them to, uh, to steer the course uh, for all these, you know, uh, these various uh, parts of our lives, you know, and then of course they go and they meet up at like Bilderberg and, uh, the World Economic Forum and, and all of these other places to, you know, continue to network and, and all of that crap. Maybe it's the same shit that's been going on for hundreds and hundreds of years, just under different guises and different names. Yeah, I don't think there's a doubt about that. Um, the enterprise that was laid out in Whitney's books, like, who's the head of the enterprise now? I mean... H.W. was purported to be one of the head. Uh, I don't think the Enterprise went away when he died. No, it didn't. It didn't. It just transformed. And it doesn't seem like the policies that they had uh, been implementing since at least Reagan, probably before that, ever changed, no matter who was president. So it seems to be uh, still prevalent. <laughs> If I had to guess who was running the Enterprise now, I could think of two people, potentially. One of those people would be Barack Obama. The other one yeah. would be Jared Kushner. I think Kushner would have that clout as a young man. Uh, I think his family would have been able to get him into that position. Yeah. I would I would expect somebody older. But o Obama wouldn't surprise me, considering all the odd circumstances around his life, his uh, golden ticket that he had. Mm -hmm. Kushner... I don't know as much about him. I just know that he came from money, big, wealthy Jewish family. Mm -hmm. And there's uh, <laughs> like everything just seems to go his way. It's rather remarkable when you actually dig into it and you sit down and you start looking at it. Like even, even deals that he's made that like at the outset, you're like, there's, there's absolutely no reason why this should yield like any positive results and he walks away smelling like a rose. Well, I'm, I'm sure Mossad was set up in the image of the CIA where they were basically set up to help out whatever corporations needed them the most. Well, you got to bear in mind, you know, when you got to think he's BB net and Yahoo is sleeping, literally sleeping in your bed when you're not, the same fucking bed, Jared Kushner. You know, that that's a whole new level of relationship. Kind of like when you're a recording artist uh, for P. Diddy at uh, Bad Boy Entertainment. Anyways, back to you, Drizzle. That's, a, that's an apt analogy. What do you think is the next uh, shoe to drop in that saga? How much do you want to bet, Rob, oh. that B.B. Netanyahu has literally groped some Jared Kushner anus like P. Diddy on um, insert artist name here. 
Apparently, that's what you got to do to get the power. You got to let somebody take your anus, and then you can get to pro progress to the next level. <laughs> I guess that's why I'm a, I must be a failure then. <laughs> I believe that's when hip hop leads to slip slop. Anyway, uh, the Man. next shoe. I don't know. Does yeah. there need Speaking to be TikTok, another shoe? How are things working out on the TikToks there for the Liberty Radio outreach program there, Drizzle? Oh, it's it's going to take a while. Like it's not going to be an overnight thing. How many? Right. Yeah, we're playing the long yeah. game here, and we're you got to get a thousand followers. Wow! You just need to make a couple cat videos with the Liberty Radio symbol in the background, and uh, have your cat dance, do some silly tricks. Definitely. Oh, she does tricks, man! It's just it's Definitely. hard to to get them on tape because she she's a cat. Right, so you, you now can't, is like, the time command her to for do Briar a Rose she to make it. her cinematic pose. Uh, Mr. Demille, we're ready for a close up. Yeah, it would be nice if she was that controllable, but no, it's just whenever she feels like it. And then well, it's, we have get the fuck out of the way. In the past, that uh, there are dog owners, and you know they own dogs, and then there are human owners, and they're owned by cats. Yeah. Anyway. I think a way to get around the silly censorship that you have on these major platforms is to come up with that stupid populist bullshit that gets clicks and, uh, you know, make money off of that while you're producing the other stuff that really uh, means something <laughs> like you are. Maybe you'll even get more uh, reach from people watching the cat videos. That's quite thing possible. Thing of it is, name one cat Trump, name the other cat Biden. That's all you got. Why not use the system against them? Use their money against them. <laughs> if you can. It's the uh it's the ability to find those stupid things to get clicks. Yeah. Here's the Everything... thing, folks. You can hate the radio all you want. Take the next step and become the radio. And here we are. Here we are. Going out live, coast to coast and border to border. Crossing borders. And on the radio, 8-4 to the 2-4, Bladowskis. Wow. Radio 8424.com, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, apparently every Friday night, every Friday night that, that uh, we're on the air. Of course, uh, heads up to uh, everyone over at uh, Radio 8424. Uh, we will not be broadcasting next week. Uh, I don't know if, if you've heard us say that so far in the last three weeks, but uh, we won't be on the air for regular broadcast next Friday night or any day next week, except for the Get Fact Harder. We'll do that. We, we will be on the air next Thursday night for those at um, Radio um, 8424. Viva Mexico. Well, yeah, for Get Fact Harder, but we won't be doing uh, pre-show for it. It'll just be coming on at uh, 10 o'clock Eastern Daylight Time. Roundabout. And uh, 9 p.m. Central Daylight Time, if there's still a planet, because that is post-eclipse. Correct. So. And I figured it'd just be easier to take the week off after, right? Like, it, cause if, if we survive and, and everything's fine... Right, then that just means I have a week off. But yeah. if the world ends, then it was actually smart on my point, on my part. You already planned like, ahead. I already planned ahead. So you already knew. You already know there's not going to be a planet. Right. Don't, right, don't, don't. There's not going to be a planet. Yeah. Don't. Check don't and mate. Get discovery. all anxious about tuning in for the next Liberty Radio because we're on vacation. So and the world ended anyway. So what's your guys' uh, craziest theory for what's going to happen? Well, I know it's going to be so a hell of a climax Monday because we've got, I've got an appearance Sunday morning, and then we've got the big show Sunday evening through early Monday morning hours, possibly all the way till six a.m. I mean, we'll we'll see how long LD can last on the ones and twos, um, and then we're going to have the special eclipse coverage with mm -hmm. Drizzle during the uh, moments of totality with the space time continuum, uh, and then of course. There will be the triumphant return after two weeks of the Peasants podcast um, episode um, more than 60-something. 
maybe 70 now. Anyway. And yeah. and that, that, that'll be uh, when we, we come. Wait, to what are you with, doing Sunday morning? I'm doing a, a special uh, pre-record with my homie there at the Sacred Channel. Oh, okay. Cool. We'll talk about some of the Ketua, the Seven Clans, and the Cherokee path to spirituality and oneness with um, all life that's ever existed that always exists. Because uh, we're all birds. Anyway, back to you, Drizzle. The birds aren't real. All day. <laughs> what is real? Is nah, real. I don't want to talk about Zionist again. Anyway. Yeah. Just a Memorex commercial. Is it real or is it Memorex? You guys remember that? Mm. I know you like There's me. another catchphrase. What is real? What is real? Anyway, Israel. I don't ah, think what is real? <laughs> what is real? <laughs> Seriously. Uh, there's a t shirt in there somewhere. I know it. Yeah. Yeah. And of course, that goes with the back panel of the same shirt. Israel evil is real evil. Yeah. Because realize, realize, real lies. That's right. To find out more, fuck around and visit manufacturingreality.org on your interwebs. Results may vary. No, it's up all the time. Well, unfortunately, in the good old United States of Markaland, um, we do have some internet connectivity issues every now and then. Um, yeah, what the call hell your going on local with that internet this week? service provider and uh, enjoy the whole music. I don't. I don't understand y'all having internet problems all week. My internet has been fine. <laughs> My internet has actually been the best this week out of like ever with this provider. It's been fantastic this week. I've been softening up the coasts. It's been raining. But, but note, note, oh, folks, to the audience listening now and later, note the use of the non sequitur. It's been fine, <clears throat> quote unquote, this week. Because again, well, yeah. I don't care where you live, unless it's Chattanooga, probably going to have connectivity issues because our infrastructure is shit. Because poop. What's poop. so great about Chattanooga again? Because Chattanooga is one of the only places in the United States of America that has municipal owned broadband. So. The city of Chattanooga provides all of its citizens with um, sewage treatment, um, you know, through the sewer lines, sanitary sewer mains, because um, poop. Um, all, they also provide lights, um, electricity, um, and um, drinkable clean water from the Tennessee River um, filled with fluoride, and uh, internet, because they consider it a utility. It's, it's a communist backwater. Anyway, Tennessee Valley Authority. <laughs> right, because, um, you know, they had to create the Tennessee Valley Authority and flood all of our most sacred Cherokee lands, including our capital city and the namesake town for the state of Tennessee, uh, so that they could build coal-fired power plants and hydroelectric power plants That's right, to build nuclear progress. bombs at the K2 secret city uh, there in Oak Ridge, Tennessee, as part of the Manhattan Project. But anyway. So what you're saying is you got a lot of blood on your hands. Yeah. And then it was the Alcoa plant that's short for Aluminum Company of America there in Marysville, Tennessee, right next to Oak Ridge. Everything around um, Knoxville. Go Rocky Top. Go Vols, UT. Um, and uh, Maryville Alcoa plant there got the assholes there that are like, hey, we're discharging all this aluminum and fluoride into the water. So, wait a second. Let's pay some dentists and say that fluoride's good for your teeth. Am I right, Derek Bros? Anyway. The ADA was not paid off. I don't know what you're talking totally. about. <laughs> I mean, hey, if you can't, if you flunk out of medical school and you can't pop backs as a chiropractor, um, try dentistry. I mean, when you're paying $20 million a year to get rid of the hazardous waste and you can pay somebody a couple million to um, take it off your hands, 
That's a win-win. Uh, absolutely. Well, that's yeah. A I mean, first you make your um, oh, what's it called? You make your uh chemical potassium fertilizer there in the northern panhandle of Florida, home of the cracker. Um, and then uh, it, that leaves a uh liquid uh chemical toxin called hydrofluorosilicic acid. Um, which burns through steel and concrete. But, you know, mm -hmm. if you add it to municipal water, it's good for your teeth. That's right. Which leads to fluorosis and the bright white spots of fluoride, which is, again, the modeling and crumbling of your teeth because fluoride is good for your teeth. That's right. That's why you need it in the water. That's right. And that's why you also have to have little children uh, take it at school. Yeah. Yeah. Take notes if you're not. Keep up. You know what? You they, can pause, weren't rewind. They, didn't they this at one the time? Uh, didn't they like when they started fluoridating the water supplies uh, of the various cities in the United States? Didn't they also like send out uh, fluoride tablets to all yes. the schools for the kids to take instead we're, of we're doing back the, into the dental treatment? Yeah. Um, videos with that lovely narrator voice, like um, oh, uh, what's his name, Rod Serling. Imagine the voice of Rod Serling, like you know, Twilight Zone guy. Um, and the black and white videos explaining to the youth why um, the fluorides is good for you. They uh, tried to give me uh, a prescription for my kids because we have well water and it's not fluoridated <laughs> for a, a prescription for fluoride drops for the kids. And fortunately, me and my ex-wife are on the same page and we laughed and we crumbled it up and threw it away. But it's like. <laughs> really? Wow. That's what fucked with me when Fried I was in drops. Ecuador because Ecuador did not have fluoridated water in there. That there was just untreated, clean mountain spring water from the Andes that we're drinking in the tap. That's what I've ever had. Fucking cold and delicious. It just tastes like um, no taste. Which is, you know what? Water's not supposed to have a fucking taste. It's right. just supposed to be what. Any, anyway, anyway I, I digress. So I go to the fucking grocery store. Get the salt. They got two kinds of salt. And there's like one kind of salt that there's just like literally three or four canisters of it. And it's like $10. And that's just plain regular table salt. And then all the rest of the salt is the salt yodada. I'm like, what the fuck is salt yodada? <laughs> Yo daddy? Salt, salt, your daddy? Salt yodada. Oh. Um. It's got iodine and fluoride. It's fluoridated salt. So they've put fluoride in the salt because it's not in the water. And that, that's the salt that they sell at pennies on the dollar. So that everyone will just buy the fluoride salt. Wow. Um, Fucking diabolical. Which, which, if you're wondering, that's the Morton's that has the rainbow right. um, umbrella. Right, um, but it's all in Spanish. Anyway, that's that's pretty shameful. Yeah, that's fucking sinister. Yeah, and so you know what? I said fuck it. I just spent the ten bucks and got the plain table salt, like it's sold in America, that had the English label because it was imported from the United States. And I'm like, aha! There you go. Well, I got you... American non-fluoridated salt to use. With my non fluoridated Andean fucking spring water, no fluoride detected. Victory. Well, if you ever want to um, give somebody something to think about who watches TV and believes it, um, show them the uh, hundred plus things that the United States allows to be put in the food supply that mm -hmm. is hazardous to your health that every other country in the world is banned or. Um, That's right. <laughs> That's right. Most pe most places just eat food and have drinks. We have foody food like foods and drinky drinkish drinks. Yep. Borderline food, food edible stuff. But it's definitely we have food stuff. They're not really edibles, they're consumable. Yeah, it's food food ish. Foodie stuff. One of, yeah. one of the orange juices that Coca Cola owns <laughs> uh was found to have forever chemicals in it. Like what the fuck? The um a Teflon coating, PFAS. Yeah. fat. That's right. So it doesn't. Yummy. So it doesn't stick to you. What's yeah. better than C seven in your blood? C eight. <laughs> it's 
still putting corn syrup in their shit, even though they know the health effects of it. Mm -hmm. It's it is sinister, like you said. Yeah. And uh, even even once like all the stuff is found out to be so bad for you, so toxic, so corrosive. Yeah, they keep doing it because nobody's stopping them. I'll never forget the first time one of my expat friends came over uh, to the crib, hanging with uh, my wife and uh, nephew in there that uh, I was helping to raise, put finishing him up through high school and stuff. Dominic, you know, and so we're all there hanging out at the crib, and we made some French fries. And he goes into my uh, little spice rack there and grabs my ten fucking dollar bottle of non fluoridated salt that I was describing earlier, and starts to jack off my fucking salt shaker all over his French fries. I jump up off the couch. I'm like, "Whoa, dude!" fuck are you doing man that's ten dollar fucking shaker of salt man you just shot three dollars of a fucking salt wad on those fries give me my salt back asshole i'm saving your life here man think of your arteries dude all that salt man that's that's too much speaking of uh hazardous chemicals you want to see a map of the glyphosate usage in the country uh, ooh. <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> yeah that that's one of those things where they keep paying out lawsuits for billions of dollars admitting that the the product caused uh cancer but they uh don't have to take it off the market at the same time oh or no here's the thing about it they've actually been phasing out glyphosate use in their pesticides now for about the last 15 years because glyphosate is old hat that's the old stuff they got new better stuff with new better chemical names and product names that have no studies of regulation i'm referring to dicamba which is um, oh. roundup 2.0 um and dicamba is um even more sinister and you know if you pair dicamba with some of these new um mrna vaccines um you're gonna have super duper turbo cancer and look wow. all of those areas where it's intense intensifying into like a black plague mm -hmm. corn country yeah that's it is. a whole lot of gmo yeah, corn illinois indiana yeah that's all corn because, you know, other areas of the bread basket where well, it's not it's... as dark or sporadic with the darkness, like, you know, there with Nebraska mm -hmm. and Kansas, they are also growing the holy fuck out of the GMO wheat and the GMO soy. But where it's the blackest, I can tell you right now, that's some that that's some corn like corn cob eggplant emoji. You know what I'm saying? Wow. That's insane. That is, that is insane. Look at that. Black death across most of the country. And look at it over there in the San Joaquin Valley. Yep. yep. In, in California. Yeah, and it's also up there in the uh, right around Hansford Nuclear um, Festivals there in the uh, lower Columbia Valley there right uh, on the border between uh, Eastern Oregon and uh, Eastern Washington State, where it borders the northern hmm. panhandle of um, Idaho. That's some state over there. I don't know. That is absolutely nuts. Gentlemen, we have about a minute left. Whoa! Who, who well, wants did to you get... see on the Delmarva? Go back to that map. Did you see an LD's native land? Look at mm -hmm. the Del Marva Peninsula. Yeah, they do some growing out there. Black. Bro, all everything on the east side of the Chesapeake for Maryland and the entire state of Delaware is glyphosate festival, as is pretty much all of Tidewater Piedmont there down in North Carolina. 
Sorry, sorry. Yeah. That missed my eye before, and I just noticed. At least New Jersey doesn't use it. <laughs> I couldn't see Jersey on the map, so I don't know. Uh, as much. Well, don't forget to tune in tomorrow night, folks. Uh, don't forget to tune in Monday to find out if the world ends. Uh, we're about to get out of here. But we'll be Ganga back Yuhi in Nigada. two Nigada. weeks. Nigada. Say goodbye, Rob. Take it easy, everyone. Peace.